All right, let's just jump right into it. We're looking at a pretty high stakes decision here, choosing between two really complex storage technologies, DRAID and RAID Z. And trust me, this isn't just about picking something from a menu. It's about understanding what you're really betting on when things inevitably go wrong. And the reason this is such a big deal starts with this number. 1.2 petabytes. I mean, that's what you get when you pack a 60 base server with giant 20 terabyte drives. It's just a mind-boggling amount of data. And, you know, that's the trap, isn't it? You see that number, that mountain of storage, and you think, wow, this is the dream. But for the media professional at the heart of this story, this was actually the start of a super confusing, multi-week dive into the dark arts of data protection. So let's talk about the actual problem here. We're dealing with enormous video files, client archives that are absolutely massive. This isn't just about storing some documents. This is about making sure that if three drives die, which can happen, you don't instantly vaporize a client's entire project. So the mission was pretty straightforward. They needed two things more than anything else. First, you've got to have blazing fast speed to work with these huge files without any stuttering. And second, you need to be able to sleep at night knowing your system can take a few hits and not lose a single byte of data. And that brings us to the main event. In one corner, you've got Raid Z, the seasoned veteran, the one everybody knows. And in the other corner, you have D-Raid, the newer kid on the block that promises to fix some of Raid Z's biggest problems, especially at this kind of scale. You can think of it like this. RAID Z is the system we all get. It's got rigid rules, its risks are, well, they're well known, it's predictable. DRAID, on the other hand, is the challenger and it's built on one huge promise. Way, way faster recovery times when a drive dies. And as we're about to see, that speed, it changes the whole game. So how does DRAID pull off this magic trick? Well, the secret is something called distributed hot spares. Now, these aren't physical drives just sitting around doing nothing. Instead, DRAID basically sprinkles a little bit of spare space across every single drive in the entire pool. So when one drive kicks the bucket, that space is ready to go, instantly. And this, this is where things get really critical. We're talking about the rebuild race. This is that terrifying window of time after a drive has failed and your whole system is scrambling to heal itself. The longer this takes, the bigger the chance that another drive fails and pushes you right off a cliff. Now, this is the question that messes with everyone's head. You look at a big RAID Z setup, and you might see, say, 12 drives worth of redundancy. Then you look at a DRAID setup and see it can only handle three failures. And you think, wait a minute, 12 is way more than three. This DRAID thing sounds weaker. It feels totally backwards. But that thinking is a trap. And here's the twist. Here's the key idea you have to wrap your head around. The real danger isn't about the total number of drives you can lose. It's all about how long you're stuck in that high-risk danger zone while the array is degraded. The faster you get your redundancy back, the safer you are, period. And we're not talking about a small difference here. It is a night and day comparison. With a traditional RAID C system and these huge modern drives, a rebuild can take 24, 48 hours, sometimes even longer. That's two full days of just sweating it out, hoping another drive doesn't pop. With DRAID, because every single drive in the pool helps with the rebuild, people are seeing times under eight hours. That window of vulnerability just shrinks dramatically. Now, the reason DRAID is so fast is because of its secret weapon, a pretty unique two-step recovery process. And it completely changes what it means to be safe after a drive has failed. So here's how it works. Step one is the fast part, the resilvering. The system just blasts the lost data into that distributed spare space we talked about. Once that's done, in under eight hours, your full redundancy is back. The pool is considered safe again. Only after that's finished does the slow second step rebalancing even begin. And that's just the cleanup job of writing the data back to the new physical drive you eventually plug in. So think about what that means. For RAID-Z, getting safe and getting tidy are the exact same thing. It's not safe until the whole long process is over. But DRAID splits them apart. It says, look, let's get you back to a safe, redundant state as fast as humanly possible, and we'll worry about cleaning up the mess later. That is a huge, huge deal for managing risk. Okay, so with all that in mind, when does DRAID actually make sense to use? And what's the catch? Because you know there's always a catch. Well, if you talk to the people who really live and breathe this stuff, 
they'll tell you D-Raid was basically born for situations exactly like the one we started with. A giant 60 drive pool filled with huge 20 terabyte disks. That's the poster child for D-Raid. It's where rebuild times are the scariest and the odds of a second failure during that window are the highest. But you know, it's not a silver bullet. There are definitely trade-offs. For one, its performance can be a little weird with tons of tiny files. Not a problem for our video editor, but it could be for you. Second, setting it up involves some way more complicated math than ReadZ. And finally, all that distributed spare space isn't free. It takes a bite out of your total usable capacity. So when you kind of zoom out from all the technical specs, what's the real lesson here about managing data at this kind of insane scale? Well, it turns out it's less about the technology and, funny enough, more about philosophy. The choice really boils down to psychology. Are you more comfortable with the predictable known risk of RAID Z, where the rules have been the same for years? Or do you buy into this newer idea that you can actually lower your overall risk by focusing on the speed of recovery, even if the setup feels a little more alien? And I just love this quote from the source material because it just hits the nail on the head. The real win with DRAID isn't about some number on a spec sheet. It's about cutting down on the time you spend in that high anxiety danger zone. It's about surviving that rebuild with both your sanity and your data fully intact. And that brings us to maybe the most important point of all. True safety is a whole strategy. It doesn't matter if you pick RAID Z or D RAID. That is just one piece of a much bigger puzzle. It is not a backup. Real data safety means you have regular backups, you're constantly monitoring your system, and you have an actual plan for what to do when, not if, a drive fails. Because when you're playing with over a petabyte of data, you have to accept a hard truth. You're not just a system admin setting up a server anymore. You are actively gambling with probabilities and the harsh reality of hardware failure. And the real question is, which system are you going to bet on to tilt those odds just a little bit more in your favor?